Last week, uh, lost a tough game at South Alabama. It's a game that is a hard match for us. That's part of basketball today at, at all different levels. And we seem to bring out the best in them. Uh, the second time we played in the first half, played a, a really good first half. Only to let them shoot 60% uh, in the second half. Wasn't quite as good as they shot the ball here in the Cajun Dome, but they shot the ball extremely well. We could stop them. We used six different defenses in the second half. And couldn't slow them down, and then when we did slow them down, they got to the free throw line quite a bit. Games and the calls didn't fall our way. The shots fell south out down as well. We got the game close at the end, had a chance, uh, got actually in possession a minute 20 to go. We called foul in the backcourt, let them go make two free throws. And the next possession, they let them go make two free throws again. Uh, so it's hard to defend those. And it was a, a disappointing loss. Our group regrouped. Uh, Headed to New Orleans, spent the night there, got up, caught a, a direct flight to San Antonio, went through Dallas, and sat for an hour. Cool. After sitting for an hour in New Orleans on the runway before we took off. So, flew into San Antonio, then bus to San Marcos, and uh, had a good practice, and got ready for the game the next day with Texas State for the second time or third straight opponent. Was off. The play day before us. We've got two more to go in this week now. Let's just stay in the UTR and buy the road. We don't need to get schedule before. But Texas State had been struggling a bit recently, and we were fortunate to, to get off to a good start. We shared the ball against those guys, moved the ball. Bryce Washington and John Stowe had really good first halves. And we were able to get a lead, and then Again, let them come back. They got to the free throw line. Got to have the six. <coughs> we had to come from ahead in the second half. Again, they uh, pulled it out. We're pretty good at that. Uh, but seriously, teams in basketball continue to play well in the second half. I mean, no one's going to lay down and let you beat them uh, like a couple games we had at home. But everybody's competitive. Looking ahead this week, we, well, first of all, we got a big week of reunion. Coach Hatfield we started the program back after Coach Shipley uh, in the mid 70s. In his era, and the, and the young man that came in and some administration that were very instrumental in reviving our program and helping provide even more of our great tradition. And then Coach Pasquale, he coached, he was the last coach to coach the Cape in the Black and uh, brought us over to the Cape. So we're excited about those guys returning. Those two coaches are personal friends of mine, have been for a long time. And they care a lot about this university and this basketball program. We're delighted to have them <coughs> recognize them when the game is going to be televised on the SBN 2 HUTR Saturday. First up with App State on Thursday, they've got a nice team. They won their first conference game at Arkansas State, return to Boone, and we beat those guys there in a game where we played well in the first half and we're at the hang in the second half and beat them 80-64. And they lost three games in a row after that, so they won one, lost four, and now they've won four and lost one. They really got it going to beat Georgia State at home. They lost their last game at Georgia Southern, and as I said earlier, they've been off weekend going into our game Thursday night. They've got a guy in, in the Eves that can really shoot the ball. He's averaging 19 and 5 in conference play. He's one of the best, best perimeter people in our league. They won at Texas State a week or a half ago to get 31 or 64 points. It's a very good score. Uh, we did a good job on him up there. He just missed some shots on top of the defensive effort of our team. And Tommy Spagnola is an inside guy that does a nice job for him. He averages 10 and a half and 7. A good inside outside combination. And they've got a couple other guys. Burgess is a good point guard. Clark can shoot the ball. 
advocacy role. Well. They're a good basketball team. I wonder we'll have to be ready. We don't want them to come in and pick up a victory here in Lafayette. It's a first year program. We know that happened with the football team. We call some championship. We don't want that to happen. So we want to make sure that we're ready to go on Thursday. We're looking forward to a couple of good days of practice. Again, get back to Thursday, Saturday routine. And then get ready for our one day prep after. We're six and five in the league. A year ago we were three and five. I think a lot of people are I think the jars have full, but uh, there's there's a lot to be said instead of jogging that bit. We've got uh, more games left than we had last year and it's all in front of us. We're looking forward to the team plays up. What prompted the change in the starting lineup, putting Stove in? What did you see from him to put him in there? Uh, defense. He's one of our better defensive guards. So we started him in both the last two games. We'll see what happens this week. To see him kind of then go off offensively, especially the first half, just how, how important was that in the context of the game? Uh, it was certainly well received. I mean, we needed him to be aggressive. He had 15 at the half. I think he missed a shot that he did. First half played well. Uh, he could have had a super game, you know, if things were falling right for him. But I tell you, he made a great play in the second half. He got the end one when we really needed it to, to help us break the tie and get the lead late in the game. What's been the biggest benefit to other guys of some of those changes that you made starting early? I felt like Casey came off the bench against South Alabama. We started Stove in his place. We started Rimmer, I think, maybe the game before. I can't remember, guys. Uh, but Casey came in and shot the ball well against South Alabama. In the second half, we started Casey over Brian Williams, and Casey didn't defend very well, and it hurt us. Uh, he wasn't the only one. Uh, that, that's one benefit. Uh, I think it can help us defensively. Stove has got some size and doesn't Some guys are better off the bench, some guys are better story. It doesn't really matter to me. We're going to play a lot of people as we did. I think we probably played 11 or 12 people in both games in the first half. So, more about finishing the game. with Williams transferring in last year, I know he was, has been counted upon being that older senior for leadership. And seems to have shown that quite a bit. Last couple of games, he had not played as much. Uh, What's his status now? Well, we'd like him to show it more. Like, to be honest, he's, he's had his moments where he's really done that, and he could really help us defensively. If you just look back at the numbers, didn't play well against Georgia State up there in a poor shooting game. Did have a couple of assists. He had a positive assist to turnover ratio, which he's uh, not very good in that category. In fact, he's one of the worst on the team. He's got to get better with that on the offensive end. You got to play better defense. You know, I think they defended well in South Alabama, so we can play. You know, Stowe got off to a great start. We got his minutes the other day. So I expect more from Brian and hopefully we'll get him. What do you think had been had been leading to some of the, the drop off from the first half to second halves and kind of the games prior? And how big was it to then get the big run at the end against Texas State? Well, the drop offs, I mean, we're not going to go out and dominate a team from start to finish if that's what you're asking. I don't think everybody has, especially at home, the guys and teams are going to come out and play good hard. I don't drop offs or some calls and don't go our way. I mean, there are a lot of different things that can go into that. Uh, we have to be better on offense, we have to be better on defense, and give them too many baskets. Uh, and it's just part of the game. Anything with that. It was good to come from behind the other day, yes. Uh, come from ahead, as I mentioned, uh, to, to pick that victory up. But we knew that we could win this game, and it was a crucial game for us, and hopefully, we get this confidence we can play. What, what is the feeling now about confidence in terms of finishing strong compared to roughly where you were around this time last year? Last year we were three and five and we had less games, so this year we're six and five. And, uh, have more games. So we have five games at home, I think we're on the road. We want to play well. We know that if we shoot the ball and defend a little bit better than one 
better teams in the league. It's all about seeding and trying to go forward the best we can and get the best seed that we can in the tournament. We've said that all along. Saturday was the first time Sean had gotten in foul trouble in a lot of games. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how your team sort of had to compensate for that and you know, if you were saying they were able to kind of push through it? When Devontae Walker came in the other day. We started Bryce the last two games. Don't know which direction we're going Thursday, but Devontae came in and had a nice game for us. And, uh, he also made a big basket, I want to say, to break the tie late in the game, and then he made his free throws. We all did. <clears throat> but Devontae was able to cover for him a little bit. Armani Gant's a very good player for them, an all conference guy. I thought we did a good job defensively. They had a young man named Tilbury that jumped up and scored 20 points. Uh, he was 3 for 18 in 10 conference games. And against us, he goes 3 uh, for something he made 3. So that was a surprise a little bit. But he missed the one late in the game, which Tells us was the last six and a half minutes, I believe. But Sean sitting, the other guys just stepped up. We had good support off the bench. And Sean was in, did a good job staying in the game. He was much better than a year ago. And then the year before had him in his approach. So he was able to come back and make some big plays. Do you notice that guys uh, prepare or get ready for a game any differently when they know that it's going to be the cable TV cameras uh, you will be seen anywhere in the country compared to no, anything else? I don't think so. I think you get ready to play every game the same. At least I hope so. We don't talk about that much. I mean, the guys know the game's broadcast. But every game's broadcast now. You guys probably get to see some of the games you don't attend. Everything's out there for people to see. Jay Wright had 10 assists, only one turnover in the win. How much have you guys emphasized him as a staff to kind of take control of the offense? How important is he going to be in these last four final games in some of play? Well, it's very important. Uh, in looking back at South Alabama, he fouls out. And uh, we thought he had one foul. <coughs> the referees thought he had five. And it hurts. It really hurts. He's, he's playing very well, he's getting more comfortable. As you said, when he doesn't play well, it definitely affects our team. I mean, he does a lot of different things. You know, against Georgia State, he scored the ball from the home game. He had 20 points. And in this game, he passed the ball. But he always defends. And if you, if you look, go back to our guards and question earlier, I told the coaches after the game the other night, that we have a lot of guys that can score the ball, but that's what they do. And outside of that, who can impact the game in different ways? And Jay Wright's our best guard. He doesn't have to score. He can pass, he can do other things around the team. So outside of Jay, we don't have a lot of guys that can do that. We had one last year. Because how comfortable are you? with the idea of, of kind of placing more responsibility in the freshman as you get closer to the tournament and all that. It is, what have they shown that, you know, allows you to do that, sir? Uh, I mean, I signed, I mean, you know, when I signed, we went over this early, that they, they can play, and they just, they're getting more experience. They started a couple of games, and somebody said the Stokes first started last week, they started in Vegas. Price is going to a couple games. They're very capable. They're smart players. They've been effective for us on both ends. Bryce had a tough game on the other night. He missed his last five shots, I think. Uh, made one to start the second half, and then he missed some bunnies right at the basket. He didn't like that back. He got frustrated. He also got nine rebounds, I think, and had two big blocks in the last three minutes of the game. So they can impact the game without scoring also. Bob, with that TV game coming up Saturday, does it does it change things with the way you have to do your schedule with, with the team? And does it change the team one way or the other? Well, our schedule will be a little bit different because the game got moved up from the evening to the afternoon. And, and we 
have the reunion, and that that puts a little bit of time demand on us more than anything. Coach Murphy's been extremely busy with this reunion, and as I said earlier, Coach Hatfield and Coach Pascal love this university, and, and they've done their part. Uh, so it's, it takes up a lot of time, and uh, hopefully some of you guys can continue to have them on the radio or interview some of the coaches this week, uh, put them on TV when they come in. And we'll have a meeting, I guess, you know, playing Thursday and Friday, we'll have a reception at the alumni house and then have another reception the day of the game. So that'll take up some time for me a little bit. The coaches want me to fly out of state, watch a game Friday night, high school game. Uh, just keep doing it. Uh, there's too much going on here. So, but that's the biggest thing. The players will be ready. I mean, being at home, it'll be nice to have two games at home and not have to travel. Again, yeah. Coach, you mentioned the Hatfield game. Uh, you know, you have to have a lot of confidence. I don't want to say it fell into like a funk in the middle of the season, but he started off really hot, and then his minutes kind of went down a little bit. What did, what did he show you to kind of build that faith back up a little bit, I, I guess, if you're putting him in the start? Yeah, well, the I mean, the face always been there, but to, to get the more opportunity to play, it's just we weren't getting production from Brian. So we could go to the next man up, and Jonathan's there, he's ready. Uh, and we felt like he can help us defensively, he can rebound. And if you look at all of our guards, he's one of the better rebounding guards. Uh, he's one of the better defending guards that we have. He's very competitive. Anything else, guys? Thank you. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Joe.